Go I joint. It's your birthday. What's going on everybody? Jay Hayes here. So today I'm be doing a review on a device that I was sent for the purposes of the review. Everybody knows the deal with me and iJoy, right? Had a bit of a rough start. You know, it was probably hard for them to watch me destroy their Capo Squawk. Now, if you haven't seen that review, I'll just start off. I know we're only like 30 seconds in, but post the link right there. That's basically the device that I got that didn't put out more than 4.2 volts. So it was basically an unregulated Squawk mod, although you could really adjust it. You can down it, but you couldn't up it, if that makes sense. Long story short, then I had a problem with the RDTA mini box misfire and then fire all by itself so I guess you could consider that a misfire basically the corner of the fire button would get stuck and it would continue to fire and it didn't have a cutoff now I think that they actually fixed that but then again I mean who's to know because they've made so many of them let's fast forward a little bit right they did the captain they did the zenith x3 or 3 3z zenith I don't remember the one with the voltage dial like that. They did the diamond. So one thing I want to cover that a lot of people discuss whenever I do an iJoy product is they're like, oh, that's Joytech failing. Again, you guys have to understand, iJoy is not Joytech. Look, I'm speaking on behalf of my experience. I don't have any direct communication with iJoy. Actually, I do, but I think it's one of their contacts here in America. I had posted this on my Patreon. The person that works with iJoy, I think it's out of California, is his female, I don't want to say her name, She's on top of the game, man. She's like, look, I saw all your stuff. iJoy wants to show you that we're a better company. They went above and beyond. I didn't put that anywhere else on Facebook or YouTube just because whenever I post that type of stuff, it's always about Jay starting drama. So if I post it on Patreon, then only Patrons are going to see it and they're not going to say that. Before we bring this out, there was a little bit of research done right here. What I was thinking of was the iJoy eTop. Funny enough, I thought that that was spelled wrong, but I remember, I don't know if I did a review on it. I might have done it on the M version, which was basically their mech. But they were so unique because at that point, Joytech was all that was out there. So this co this company coming along, taking apart, iJoy, I, I thought there was an E on it, but I I can't find anything there. But what I am referring to is the iJoy eTop. Again, you're going back, man. This is before iJoy was anything. Super badass mod. It was a little powerful for what it was. Had a little rubber grip and shit. Kind of looks like a vibrator or like a super tall cucumber with a round top and a square base which is really nothing like a cucumber when i think about it basically uh an asparagus made out of metal titerosaurus <laughs> sounds like some kind of broken dinosaur right let's just bring this down i just wanted to get that out there because those were devices i'm telling you i don't know if there's anybody out there that owns them because they weren't really big when they came out it was just the competitor was joytech so let's make devices guys you have to realize that before box mods came out 2015 which was the hannah keep that in mind the hannah was the first box mod to be made that's what hannah box comes into but uh not hammond but hannah that's what it was back then all devices were cylindrical whether you were rocking a mech or regulated there was no such thing as box mods and fun fact for you is when box mods came out nobody liked them everybody hated it they said oh it's too boxy and i feel it in my leg it's, it's too rough i don't like this but now everybody likes box mods it's funny how that works isn't it man i gotta give it to ijo for making that adapter ah i almost want to make the rest of this review biased so what we're looking at today is the Diamond VPC kit. This thing is absolutely dainty as shit. Now here's the deal. They're labeling this as a pod mod. I don't know if I necessarily agree with the name. A couple reasons why. It's a regular 510 connection. So if you already have a tank or an RDA that for whatever reason, you're gonna try to put on top of this because this thing is tiny, man. I, I have some tiny mods here to show you on a side-by-side -side comparison. Probably one of the smallest I've ever owned. Anyway, so this thing's super small, but it comes with a tank. That's a pod. Can't swap out the coils, you swap out the pod. But here's the best part. It also comes with an adapter. I tried to use a jewel pod in this to no success, to no avail. I may have to play around with it to get it to work, but this thing is compatible with about 12 different pod based systems, which is extremely impressive. And I know this is gonna piss a lot of companies off, but 
I understand that you don't like the idea that someone is going to make an adapter to fit other pods. I understand you want to be proprietary to yourself. All I'm going to say is just like this. Welcome to your own game. The same game that you play of cloning products, of copying products, taking something from another. How's it feel when another company does it to you? In a way, I kind of want to give iJoy a smack on the ass and a high five. I necessarily would not consider this a pod-based system for a lot of reasons, but if that's what they want to label it as, go for it, iJoy. I support you 100%. Lock it down. Give it up top. What? If my arms were not sore from going to the gym, I would actually get up and do a dance with you. I could do, um, oh shit. Go I Joy, it's your birthday, you're on welfare, that's not the saying, we're gonna sizzler and you can't have none cause you're on welfare, we're gonna sizzler and you can't have none cause you're on well. Let's flip it. iJoy Pod Mod. This is also called the Diamond Bay, which I absolutely hate. These stupid ass acronyms that we're going with. B A E. It's, what does it mean? Best asshole everywhere. I don't. I don't remember what Bay means. But before anything else, so this is the mod right here. It does look a lot larger than what it is. It's probably about that true to size. On the bottom, 45 watts and then 1400 milliamps. This is supposed to be designed just for pod style systems, including the pod that's already in it that sort of looks like a little sub ohm tank. On the top, nothing. Bottom, nothing. On the side, got a little bit of scriptive writing. Pod mod, the next generation pod system. We have a scratch and sniff right here. This is going to be a grape walnut flavor and scented. All your different colors right here and then the information of the company. On the back side of the box, single 2350 1400 built-in battery. You can't swap this out. I don't know why they didn't just label it as a 1400 milliamp built-in battery, but they managed to put that 2350 here. iJoy kind of brought these into the scene. So essentially, it's the same diameter of a 2700, because that's the first two numbers, but it's only 35 millimeters in height, which is the same exact thing as the 18350, it's just a little bit fatter. You're gonna get a little bit more power out of it, but they're not really designed to replace 18650s. They're just that smaller version. The same power that you would get out of your Infinix or your Breeze, you should be getting more out of this. On the bottom, everything that's included in the box, let's open it up. Typical fold up jammy. There's the device. Guys, that thing is super, super tiny. Oh my God. I'll show you some comparisons. Got the mod, built-in battery, of course. Got the tank, which is also a pod built inside. I'll show you that as well. On the bottom, we're gonna have a little bit of extra peripherals. You're gonna have a lanyard, an adapter, which is what you're gonna need if you wanna use other pod-based system. Micro USB, a little thing that is designed for something when you put it over that other thing. Basically, this would go like this. The only problem, though, is they don't include another pod. You only get this guy right here. On the bottom of the box, you're gonna get a diamond bay. There it is right there, user manual, and then a warranty card. Can't really speak too much on the warranty, but I can tell you that I do know some people that have had problems with iJoy, and they weren't resolved, meaning that that was it. You had a problem, too bad, too sad. Put the lanyard back in, micro USB, and then the little, I don't know what you want to call that thing, bottle protector. This is the pod that it comes with. Same matching color of the body is the same matching color of the tank. Your airflow is located on the very, very bottom of this. That's the same airflow that you're going to be using for your pod base system. Take this part off. Guess what? That's a pod right there. Coil built in. can swap it out. You want to fill this up. You got this little adapter right here which you just kind of open up like so, and that's how you're gonna fill it in that little section. What's nice about this, the porthole to fill this up is actually quite large. Now, I don't really know a lot of people that are gonna be using a dropper bottle, but you could with this. And we're gonna let that sit for a little bit. Anytime you have a pod-based system that you put your own juice in, you want that to kind of sit and saturate and moisten up the wicks. I did a review on the Limitless AIO. Had the same type of adapter with this. Let me show you. This kind of did the same thing. If you haven't seen a review for this, I'll go out and I'll put a link up there in a the corner. This is the same type of deal right here. Adapter. Look at that. Looks just like the same adapter that was located here. 
And again, this does work with Jewel, the Fix, and I think one more thing. If you look at the little rubber grommet, there are the grooves, the same with the tank. You just put that in like that, and then you put whatever pod you want to use inside of there. Again, there is a wide plethora of different types of pods you could use with this, and I'll show you that on the mod. This thing is dainty. Before we get into that, let me show you some size comparisons. What we got here is the Asmodus little 50-watt jemmy that uses the 18450. You can see it's much taller. The Baby Mag Kit. Again, about the same in height, and then the AL85, one of my favorite mods of all time. Button on the side, typical diamond style, it's shaped like a diamond, up and down right there, micro USB right there to charge it. On the back, you got those lovely diamond plates, the same thing that's on their original diamond is the same thing that's on this, just the very, very miniature version. On the bottom, it appears that there is a seam here that you can separate it, however you cannot. This is all one piece, there is no way to take that battery out. Well, I'm sure if you took the screws out and tried to finger fuck this, you may get it out, but it's not designed to do that. On the top, we have a 510 connection, just four shiggles. 22 goes right to the edge. It's very, very dainty. And again, if you're looking for a very stealthy setup, this is definitely it. It's definitely better than a Smoke Q50. And really not so much as the mod is concerned, but also the accessory that it comes with, I feel is priceless. Right there, it is off. We're gonna do five clicks, turn it on. One, two, three, four, five. It's gonna say Diamond Bay, and then the version number of the firmware. Screen does look a little bit crooked, but it is what it is. Up and down self-explanatory goes up once you have 45 watts it does not round robin what's cool about this is this one two three watch this you have power which is the mode we're in pod based system so that's going to give you a very very low amount of power check this out jewel miley juno puff reset and power not a whole lot of options but the cool thing is you go to pod and it gives you the 3.2 volts that you're going to need to run that pod. Because this is one of their pod systems, what we're going to do is one, two, three, and bring it over to pod and leave it alone. And there you go. I joy Diamond Bay. Let's bring it on the top. How's everybody doing? You doing good? You feeling nice? Crispy? What? Got my lanyard on? Mmm. What you know about this? Absolutely nothing. All right, here we are. Okay, so we're back on the top with this little guy right here. That's not gonna work by iJoy with the little bitty pod system on the top. I have to take this thing off. I can't, I can't even take myself seriously right now with this little attachment on this shit. What I got on here right now is the Jewel system, which is actually pretty cool. The stock little pod based system, I don't feel is an accurate interpretation or representation of a pod based system. There's a lot of airflow on this. And I'm not saying like mouth to lung times five or direct lung. It's a little bit looser than what we're used to seeing on most pod based systems. Now, if you don't own any pod based systems, it's not that this is a bad device. I would actually recommend it over other pod based systems just because of the versatility of all the different pods that this can hold. The one that is in here is the Eon Smoke, also compatible with the Jewel inside of this device. And I have it set up non pod, non Jewel, just really 6.5 watts. Let me show you some vapor production, even though it does doesn't mean shit, but here we go. Body's starting to get all warm and shit. First off, as tiny as this is, I think it's super cute. If they're gonna make it so it houses a 2350, I think it should be removable. Either that or remove it just saying 2350, because if you had a removable battery on this small of a device, especially if we're pushing it as a pod mod, you're gonna get more money. And this is too odd, Joy. I don't understand why you would make it a built-in light bulb because people are gonna to wanna to buy your battery unless, of course, you're looking at it like once the battery dies, they have to buy another device. I don't like that mindset at all. I like the mindset of, oh, battery's dead, let me get another one. Especially if you're out and about with this, you don't wanna hope that this lasts you all damn day. Then you have a micro USB right here, which you can charge a device. You don't really have any other options, so you can't take the battery out. Literally, that's the only way. I just hope that iDraw wired that up correctly to where we don't see any kind of faulty devices. Just make sure if you do charge a device like this with the micro USB, you don't have any other options. Don't leave it plugged in overnight. Anytime you're charging anything. I get it, you could do it with your phone, but you have to realize that these vape devices aren't as advanced as what your phone is. One of my very, very few drawbacks I have with this is the way that this tank is set up. So once you screw it all the way down, do you see the way the pod is in there? It's awkward. So what you have to do is kind of loosen it up. 
The problem you have with that now is that's not fully secure. However, it still does work. For anybody out there that's looking at getting a pod based system where you already own one, you have massive amounts of different pods, this is a good option. I'm not quite sure if they're going to release other adapters, but you have to keep in mind that new pod based systems are coming out every single day. What we used to see with RTAs, RDAs, and mods, we're now seeing with pod based systems. The problem I have with that being in a retail establishment, it's very difficult to carry all the different pods because there's so many, and a lot of them are not cross compatible. This is what we need to see more of. Again, I get it. The companies that make this in China are going to be pissed off that this guy's making an adapter. There's a lot of arguments I have against that. I actually like that they're doing it. Not being spiteful. I mean, it is what it is. After all, it's all about you as the consumer. And being able to go to a store, if they don't have a Miley pod, you could say you got a jewel. If they don't have a jewel pod, you could say you got a fix. Because the other one from Limitless uses fix, but fix isn't an option inside of there. And I don't have a fix pod to test whether or not that does work. There's just a lot of options for what this little mod could do. Now let's just say for whatever reason, you want to take off this pod based system and you want to use your own dripper on it. That is very much possible. I don't recommend anything over a 22 millimeter because it's going to hang off the side and it's going to catch on your pocket as you pull it out. That's the 502 on top of that little jammy. What? You better get somebody on the phone. It's going to take forever for me to get a hit out of this, but... Out of this little jammy right here. If you tap this out at its max power, it's not going to last long. It's not designed for that. However, if you needed to, you could. I love the versatility of this mod. I really, really do. I wouldn't say that this is iJoy's best product. That would probably be that iJoy, I think it was the 2070 or the 2700. That thing was super sexy and reminded me a lot of the Evic Primo. All in all, this is not bad. I wish I could enjoy the stock pod that it came with. I don't know if it's faulty or what the situation is because they only gave me the one pod. But again, the versatility of this, being able to use all those other pods. I don't know if I finished what I was saying, but let's just say you go to your favorite store, they don't have your favorite pod, you can always get another pod that's gonna hold you over, that's gonna fit this, that could wait. I feel like these are gonna sell a lot. So the biggest problem with nicotine is this transdermal. So what's happening is I have 50 milligrams of nicotine inside of here. Every time I hit it, I get a lot of spit back and a lot of juice inside of my mouth. And it being that high in nicotine, I don't like the way that that makes me feel because I'm feeling it instantly. However, let me try to show you the vapor production we're getting out of this. Oh. Whew. Okay, good stuff, man. Wow, that is... I have no idea how people are vaping on salt-based nicotines all damn day. I have no idea. A two, three hits of 50 milligrams, I'm, I'm hit. I'm not vaping again for another seven hours. You'll see me in two days. That's when I'm going to start picking up a vape again. That is a lot of nicotine. If I'm going to rate this device on a zero to ten because of the versatility alone and the options you have with this, let's go 6.5. Seven. If I was able to swap out the battery for another 2350, which comes with their other kit, and they also sell it, I would probably jump this up to 7.58. But it doesn't. You have this built-in battery. You guys have to understand that after X amount of charges, every battery deplenishes. Like, that's... De diminishes. Deplenish? Retirement. Refreshment. I, I don't... Okay, that's that nicotine. Every time you charge a battery... Every time you use a battery, you're going to diminish the lifespan of that battery. And what happens with built-in batteries, more often than not, and this is usually why I sway away from them, is they die. And once they die, you have to get another device. There's no taking the batteries out. They're labeling this as a pod-based system, and they don't want you to use your device, although you do have that option to do so. This is a really, really high win. It's got a lot of battery life. It's very compact. Guys, this thing is super dainty. It's basically like holding Tinkerbell in your hand or Tumbelina. I think Tumbelina's from Mickey Mouse. Um. It's Thumbelina. Thumbelina? Do -do 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 -do.
I think Tumbelina sounds better than Thumbelina. Why not call it Indexalina? Why is it Thumb? I thought Tumble like she tumbles around. And her name is Bina. Tumblebina. Tumbelina. <laughs> All in all, man, this is a really good device for anybody that's just starting out or already vapes and looking to upgrade because your pod-based system keeps dying and you don't get long amounts of life. You have to realize that pod-based systems, Infinix, the Jewel, we're talking 300 to 500 milliamps. This has three times that amount in that little box. Granted, it's not skinny and long. This is one of those little mini soda can jammies. You know what I'm talking about. Pop, lock, and what? And I've kept it real. Have you? Jesus.